Welcome to the GCN Show, brought to you by Wiggle. This week, we have the best cycling destinations you've never heard of. Cycling shorts, GCN inspiration, hack or bodge, and our first ever live wattage bazooka. And we're live. We're live at Salback for GCN Salback. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that Norway loves salmon. Oh, yes, they do. And you don't have to be an elite cyclist to ride the World Championship course, but more on that later. So now our lead story, the best cycling destinations you've never heard of. Yeah, last week, Dan and I were doing the GCN show. And we got sent in some incredible submissions and that got us thinking, there's loads of places that you guys have ridden that a lot of people haven't even heard of. Yeah, so to make our point, we're gonna play a game with our live studio audience. We're gonna play Family Fortunes or Family Feud, if you're American. Now we're looking for five top answers of places that you would go on a cycling trip. Yeah, we did a survey of all of three, it's most ask 100 people, all of a hundred people to ask them what are the five top cycling destinations. Yeah, so we're gonna put it to our audience and we're gonna ask for a, a show of hands and get people to suggest answers of the top five cycling destinations and uh, see if they can get the, the top answers. So, has anyone got any suggestions? Salva. Salbach, right. You have, to, you have to raise your hand, that was naughty. <laughs> Don't speak out of turn, raise your hand. But yes, our survey said Salbach. That's, oh! that's the bonus answer. <laughs> You've won a prize. Um, come see us at the end. <laughs> right, another one, please. Yes. Yes, sir. Mallorca. Oh. Mallorca. Oh, survey, survey says Mallorca is up there. It's up there. Another yes. one? Yes. Dolomites. The Dolomites. The Dolomites. Yes! We're right. We're, so, we're, on, we're, 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 we're on to three here. We're on to three. We've got two more to that Right. Has anyone else got answer? Come on. We need two more. Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Our survey, Our survey says. said. I'm from Yorkshire. It's definitely. <laughs> yeah. It ain't going to be up there. Sorry, dude. Canary Islands. The Canary Islands. Our survey said. Ink. Is it up there? <laughs> no. Come on. Omar. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's good. No. So, it's right. Sorry, it's in. That's it. So, yeah. well, the two answers that, that you didn't manage to get. Um, Is it? I thought they were going to get these. Yes, I thought they would get them as well. The Alps, the Alps, yes, Alps and yeah. the Pyrenees. Oh my God. Alps was the top answer out of three people. <laughs> um, so all these, all these places are, are, are great. Uh, they all have epic roads and stunning scenery. Mm. But what are the places that wouldn't be top answers on Family Fortunes slash Family Feud. I mean, I'm with you, Ollie. There's Those are all great cycling locations, but sometimes kind of we like to ride where it's kind of less busy, isn't it? I mean, especially in Mallorca, in peak season, down Sacalobra, it can be quite congested, can't it? Yeah, it can, it can get really busy down there. And I think we're really lucky at GCN in that we do get to explore and visit some amazing places. And I, I have to mention, my recent trip to Iceland. I'd never thought been were, there before. you were going to mention it. Yeah. No, but I mean, riding on those lava fields through that amazing landscape, experiencing, you know, extreme remoteness, uh, it, it was like riding a bike on another planet. It was extraordinary. Yeah, it did look absolutely incredible. And last time we did the GCN show, uh, we got sent in some really cool footage of riding in Indonesia. And, well, then Dan piped up and said he had raced there. And do you know where he came? No, how did he do? He gave fourth. That's pretty good for Dan, though, isn't That's it? not bad, is it? Yeah. What team was he riding for? No idea. I can't remember either. <laughs> any, of, any of you guys remember you know what team he was ride, riding for? No? Uh, no? No, no, no idea. <laughs> Sorry, anyway, Dad. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, we also got loads of submissions that uh, well, you guys uploaded on the uploader. And I thought we'd take a look at some. That is a picture. Let me find it. Oh, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try really hard on my pronunciation here. Yeah. Um, well, uh, it's <laughs> Gangzui in China. Nailed it. Cheers, mate. <laughs> but but how cool does that look? That looks absolutely incredible. Have you ridden in China? Uh, no, but I'd like to based on that that picture. So that so I've raced in China, and well, it was amazing because I was walking around, and I felt like David Beckham. Do you know why? <laughs> Do you know why? It's not because I'm famous or anything. I think it's because I've got blonde hair. Yeah. So you do well there as well. And also, uh, racing in China, you get amazing prize money. Yeah. Yeah. I came back. I came back with a massive bonus. Beaut. Right. Brilliant. Oh, I didn't get any photos of myself yeah. up there. Sad. Um, well, we recently went to Poland about a month ago, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Which was, which was well. It's Beyond our expectations, I think it's fair to say. Yeah. Amazing forests, rolling hills, and we found ourselves on this white sandy beach, which. Considering it was on the Baltic coast, we felt like we were in the Caribbean. Yeah, we did not expect it to be rolling up our cycling shorts, taking off our socks and cycling shoes and walking on a sandy beach. No. But next to uh, Poland is Ukraine that we've just found out. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and we got sent in this picture in Bolden, or f from Bolden in Ukraine. And this picture, she basically got told not to go up a dirt cycling track and of course we as cyclists do what we're not we're told not to and uh, she went up it and what you she, mean like jump red lights yeah and uh, <laughs> and she saw the most incredible view and well basically it was so worth going up there so cycling in ukraine well, it looks absolutely mega looks pretty good it doesn't look like in in uh, hbo chernobyl it doesn't look much like that. yeah i was i wasn't going to mention that anyway <laughs> um top of my list though Go on. Norway. I've Norway. Not, I've not been there, but I, I really want to go there. I, Why? I really love mountains and fjords and stuff. And we got sent this picture as well. Check this out from Seagird. Um, and this is Fjordane. And uh, I mean, look at that. I mean, do you even switch back, bro? That, look, that does look absolutely yeah. incredible. It looks like the windiest road I've ever seen in my entire life. We haven't been up the Gross Clock yet, have we? No, but that, that is true. And now it's your turn at home. So if you kind of cycled in places that you think not many people have heard of, if you have, then pop them in the comment section below because we'd love to go through them. Yeah, then we, we know where to go visit as well. Well, that's it, yeah. That's basically it. It's now time for our weekly inspiration where you submit inspirational cycling photos or evidence for a chance to win 50, 75 or 100 pounds in vouchers from our friends at Wiggle. Yeah, in third place, we have Ian with this photo from Fuck You Oka. In <laughs> you are? The, that's the place name. Yeah. In Japan. <laughs> it's an early morning, but those hills look great. I'm sure that's, I'm sure that's how it's pronounced, mate. Thanks, mate. It does look good in <laughs> Fuck You Oka. Does look good there. Just to be got fair. away with it. Just got away yeah. with it. Second place this week uh, is Modesto with his beautiful uh, Villia bike in Panama. Oh, I'm. Look at that. I am. I tell you, mate. I'm an absolute sucker for a sunset picture. If you guys think of sending in a golden hour sunset or sunrise, I'm gonna pick it. I can't help it. I like a bit of HDR. Yeah. Not, not too much, but yes. That's a that's a that's a nice one. Right. So who's first place in this week? In first place, winning one hundred pounds of will vouchers to yeah. spend on whatever they want is. Yeah. Who's right. It? It's um. Who is it? This says Oliver Bridgewood, yeah. Yorkshire from Yorkshire, in a village of Castle I've Coon. Been entering week after week and it's finally paid off. <laughs> Great, isn't it? No, I can't. I'm not having that. I'm not having that. <laughs> I enter every week, mate. That's a cracking photo. No, it's horrific, horrific, horrific photo. Beautiful, beautiful place scrap, as well. Let me scrap that one. Scrap that one. In first place is actually David with this picture, which looked absolutely amazing, doesn't it? Look at that. Oh, well, cold rats. Have you cycled up cold rats? I have, yeah. I mean, it's, it's all right, isn't it? It's all right, that picture, but, you know. It's, it's, not ten, good, it's, not ten, it's ten times better than yours. And he said, <laughs> He's just retired at 49, and my friend offered me the chance to go and stay with him for a week. And all I can say is, thanks, Darren, I'll be back. Now it's good to have friends with nice locations where you can sign yeah. and stuff, isn't it? Well, he's got 100 pounds in wiggle vouchers now as well. So yeah. more, um, 
GCN inspiration next week. So my latest Wift Academy update is holidays are over. We're all packed up, we're ready to go. I need to clean my bike before I put it on the turbo trainer on Thursday, which is when I'm gonna do the first of the workouts. I'm gonna do one on Thursday, one on Friday, and I'm gonna to aim to do them at about 3 p.m. UK time. So whatever that is where you are, if you want to join in, feel free. Have a good holiday. I've trained a bit and I've partied a bit. And that's the perfect preparation, I think, for the next few weeks of Zwift workouts. Look forward to seeing you soon. Bye. It's now time for cycling shorts. Cycling shorts now, and we're gonna begin this week with an apology. Well, I, I, not from, I'm not gonna apologize. I think you owe everyone an apology, Hank. Yes, Dan and I on last week's show, we, well, we said that Neil Campbell became the fastest person to do the world speed record. We, we were wrong. Neil Campbell actually did the men's world speed record, but the overall record is still held by Denise Muller Gorenbeck at a speed of 180 miles per hour. 180 miles per hour on a bike. So yeah, so I'm sorry about that. That was definitely got a name right as well. Good job. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've actually met Neil. He's a good guy, and uh, I did a video on his bike. Mm. It's mental. It's got a parachute on the back of it and everything. When we need to slow him down. Pretty cool. A parachute. Yeah, worth checking out. Now, Neil, can we just can I can we have a go with the parachute, please? Oh, with you must. <laughs> We've also got some exciting news from Zwift. Yeah, they've got the World Championship course that is being unveiled shortly. It's actually exciting, that isn't it? Yeah, it's the World Championship is going to be held in Yorkshire, which is where I'm from. Um, and I'm proper excited about this, right? And the That's Zwift course is going to be the 14 kilometer finishing circuit in the beautiful spa town of Harrogate. Now, I went and checked this out with Malcolm Elliott, uh, and we did, a, we did a video about it, so you can, you can see more about it there. Yeah, the great thing about this as well is because you can't actually ride the World Championship course because, well, it goes up a one way road. Yeah, so the finish is on a one way street. So this means you can actually ride it. Yeah, it's really punchy as well and loads of little kickers in it. It's going to be a good, good circuit there. Um, in other news, Hank, have you ever played Grand Theft Auto? Yes, I'm not sure where you're going with this, Ollie. Well, in an utterly bizarre story that happened in Hawaii last week, right? It can only be described as a real life piece of Grand Theft Auto gameplay. Police responded to a stolen bike, right? Yeah. And they pursued a woman who was seen fleeing the scene by bike, right? Okay. Thinking that she'd stolen the bike. They chased her in what became this absurd, very low speed police chase. <laughs> the woman rode as far as she could away from the police until she then reached the coast where she dro dropped the bike, ran away onto a beach and then continued fleeing the scene by swimming. <laughs> she swam all the way, and this is true, to a place called Coconut Island, <laughs> where she then continued to flee by running away. The police continued the chase and eventually apprehended the lady. Did she win the world record for the fastest triathlon? I don't know, but it was, but with, it was basically like... With a police on her heels. Grand Theft Auto triathlon. I mean, GTN should take some note. They, they, well, they, they should, yeah. They could learn a lot, yeah. On other news, Norway loves salmon. <laughs> yeah, strange that, isn't it? Yeah. So, <laughs> right, so the prize for winning the King of the Mountains classification in the to Arctic Tour of Norway is 500 kilograms of salmon. This is completely true. 500 kilograms of salmon. 500 kilograms. I, I can't even imagine how much salmon that is. I don't think you kilograms. would even, well, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't even know how many fish cakes you can make out of 500 kilograms of salmon. Quite, quite a lot. Well, 500 kilogram sized but, but, fish cakes. Yeah, but I was, I was going to ask how, how many fish cakes. A lot. A lot. Yeah. What else would you make? Oh, terrine, pate, smoke some of it, consommes. Oh, all sorts. Be mint. <laughs> We now have the much anticipated return of Wattage Bazooka. And this time, for the first time, it's live. Yes, we've got a top end setup here from Wahoo. And we're going to get our very own Alan 
from Italy to take... <laughs> Yeah, we've got our very own Alan from Italy who's taken on 30 seconds of a max effort. Now, yeah. I'm interested to know... What um, power he can what do. What power he can do. So, 30 seconds. So, with a show of hands, I'm, I'm going to start off... I'm going to start off low, mate. I'm going to start off low. 300 watts. Who reckons he can hold 300 watts? For, for 30 seconds. For 30 seconds. Yeah. This, this, 400 this. watts. <laughs> I'm going to go 1,000. Yeah, he's definitely going to do a thousand. Hold on, hold on. We're, oh, we're going to walk over. Go on, go see this for us. For those of you who are still unfamiliar with Alan, he's he's incredibly Italian. Some say he's even more Italian than Ooh. Giorgio Armani having a Dolmio day on top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And he's off, Ollie. Okay, thirty seconds. Yeah, yeah, thirty seconds from five. Now go up, 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 up. Go, 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 go. We're going to wow. work out your wattage on that. Yeah. That was, that was, was that? a good effort. <laughs> Too much effort. Too much? Yeah. Too no. much effort. Where's the tiramisu? Yeah. No, no, I'm yeah. right oh. not. <laughs> I'm okay. We've got the results of Alan's wattage bazooka. He achieved a very respectable 702 watts for his 30 trainers. second effort. In, In trainers. In trainers? Yeah. Yeah. I think that was quite a lot of fun, that. Mm. You think? Do, you, do you think we should make it? A well, thing. a new thing. Yeah, watch a bazooka live. I don't know. I think we could be on something. Well, let us know in the comments section below what you think, if you'd like to see us do more 30-second wattage bazookas. It's now time for comment of the week. Now, this week we've got a couple. I'll start off with the first one from Greg Looper. I'm not sure why we keep bragging about the Dutch having more bikes than people. Every time my wife shares the same fact about our house, she doesn't sound like she's bragging. <laughs> I know exactly how she feels, she to be honest. doesn't understand M plus one. <laughs> yeah. Um, next comment is from Uwe Kretschmer, which I think, I, I think I've got that pretty good. I think. Um, he says, please don't fire Hank. He didn't mean to pronounce Piotr correctly. In second place of Peter uh, over... Oh, Piotr. Yeah, shall I do that again? Piotr. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, really good at, you're really good at that word. That's the only one I'm good at, yeah. But he, did, he learnt that when we were in Poland, uh, doing our Poland video. Yeah, I called him Peter, and he, about 20, 20 times <laughs> afterwards, he said, no, Hank, it's Piotr. After about 30 goes, I got yeah, it. Yeah, nice one, Peter, yeah. Yeah, cheers. Um, uh, we got one in from Callum Spencer, who goes, Dan Lloyd for the random tandem. Dan Lloyd on the back of, Mar on the back of Martin Ashton's tandem. Well, that, uh, that would be carnage. Yeah. I don't, not... think he would... <laughs> yeah. I don't think he'd be able to have enough power to get that thing going either. Yeah, but if you're unfamiliar with Martin Ashton's random tandem, then go check it out, because it's an amazing contraption, and yeah. Martin's amazing when he rides it as well. It's really cool. Oh, I can't believe it. I want to go, actually. But I would pay a lot of money to see Dan ride it. <laughs> <laughs> We're currently filming this in Saalbach in front of our live GCN event audience. But if you've missed our GCN events this year and you'd like to come in the future, then don't worry. Yeah, we're still finalising our plans for 2020, but why not sign up for our newsletter at GCNEvents.co and the Instagram team at GCN Event and Facebook. That way you'll miss, well, absolutely nothing. It's now time for hack forward slash bodge, where you send in your hacks or bodges. And because we've got a live studio audience, James, I think we should make use of them and get them to judge this week's hacks or bodges. So I'm underneath their seats, they've got, well, hack or bodge signs. So they're going to hold them up and let us know whether they think it's a hack or a bodge. So Shall I count them? You can, yes. I'm, as I said, I'm colour blind, so yeah. I can't actually tell because uh, they're red or green. But anyway, first up, we've got Peter from Northumberland and he's 
got a frisbee, yeah. right? And he's put a slit in his frisbee, trimmed it, and then he slides it in between where his disc brake rotor is and his hub. Mm. And therefore, he can protect his disc brake rotor when he's cleaning his bike. It doesn't get any contamination on the rotor. That's pretty smart, that. Yeah, he says it slips in easily as well. Right, we're going to ask the audience. <laughs> is this a hack or is it a bodge? Can we get... Yeah. We've got a resounding hack. Yes. Hack. Resounding hack. hack. For, well hack done, for Peter. Peter. Next up, we've got uh, Andy, who's from uh, Perth in Scotland. Mm. Right. When ah. your bike needs a wash down, it put <laughs> in, in a repair, but you don't have a work stand. We have got some Scottish people in the audience, and ah. they're not going to be impressed with that accent, just going to say. Well, there you go, he's got a pallet as a work stand. What do you make of that? Mate, I think that's genius. I would yeah. never look at a pallet and go, oh, I'm going to stick my bike on that. I don't, work, I work don't rate that, because you can't turn the pedals, which is... You need that to do your drive clean. Oh, and also, oh, forks getting scratched against the wall. Let's just let's just give it give it to the audience. Right, audience, what do we make of that? Hack or a bodge? Oh man, I'm with them on that. Sorry. What they're saying? It's a bodge. Yeah, it's a bodge. You, well, you said you thought it was good. <laughs> what are you on about, me? They're with me. Okay. <laughs> it's right. a bodge. Okay. Now, Ollie, you might have to explain this one. Yeah, this is, this is my mate, Neil. One right. of them? Yeah. Okay. And he, um, well, we were on the way back from a ride, and just before getting home, we wanted to stop and get some food. Uh, Neil got a baguette, and he put it in his empty bottle cage to ride home with it, and it, it held it pretty well. And then he also wanted some custard tarts as well, and he got them in a little box, right? Get this, this is really good. The little box, he put it on his Wahoo mount by taking his Wahoo off, and then he put his Wahoo back on, and it secured the box at the front of his bike. How clever is that? Custard tarts were perfect when he got home. Yeah. So, we'll put that to the audience. Hack or a bodge? Is that a hack or a bodge? Oh, that's difficult. Right, I don't know if I'm gonna, I don't, that's, a, that's like kind of split down the middle, that is. Uh, I don't know if I've got time to count them. Neil's dying. <laughs> I think it's gonna be a, it's a hack. From uh, our GCN. Neil's gonna be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is from Stephen. Now, walking through Falmouth in Cornwall, he came across this made out of an old bike. Now, he's definitely got the skills to pay the bills. Um, uh, to be fair, I'm impressed with that. I never look at an old bike and go, yeah, I'm gonna make a drum set up for that. Yeah, I don't either. No, should we put no. it to the audience? What do you reckon, audience? Hack or bodge? Oh, it's hard again. Do you know what? There's a lot of bodges there. I, I, I thought it was great. I don't know what we're going to go for there. Can you see? I think that's, I think that's a bodge from the audience there. All right, all right. I'm, surprised. I thought I'm sorry, one. Stephen, oh, but our audience is a tough one. and they've a tough, tough crowd, It's a they? tough crowd, and they've given you... I've, I've just went into Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> and they've given it Twitter. a bodge. Um, next up, we have Reese. Uh, who is in New South Wales, Australia. Don't do it. Um, <laughs> Race was doing a self-supported bikepacking trip from the western to the eastern coast of Australia. Um, and, oh, she, she's a girl. I thought it was a boy. Reese is, well, can be both. Um, she woke up one morning and the temperature was well into the negatives, so to get her feet caught, well, get her feet warm. In she Austria. Put, Australia. Australia, not yeah. Australia. So we're in Austria. Yeah. They're, they're different places. Uh, she put mini hot water bottles on her feet to get her toes warm. Um, <laughs> each bottle lasted about an hour. What, what do you reckon of that? No, <laughs> I've got to be honest. I've never looked at hot water bottles either and gone, yeah, good way of heating up my feet. Yeah. And there you go. Right. Crowd, what are we thinking? Is that a hack or a bodge? Is bodge? that a hack or a bodge? Would you ride with water bottles on your feet? Where do you even get mini hot water bottles? Uh, it's a definite, it's a, it's a bodge. It's a bodge. It's a bodge. Oh, more hack or bodges uh, next, next week. week. Thanks to our live studio audience. They were a tough bunch, but they were good. It's now time for caption competition. Now we're going to choose last week's winner. Who is the winner? Ollie. Well, last week was this picture of uh, Team Bahrain Merida. Yeah, that's actually, we, um, 
did a song, Dan and I. Did you? Yeah. It's by, by Raining Men. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the winning caption we've got is from Catherine Spark, who said, they're about to sing, cover your ears unless you want brain damage. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> I, I think a lot, a lot of people got Bahrain damage after our singing. Dan and I, we, we worked hard at karaoke, but it never paid off. Singing in Bahrain. What yeah, a one. Again, that's wonder. enough of that, I think. This week's photo is of Filippo Ganna, the Italian rider from Team Ineos, who won this massive keg uh, upon winning a time trial at the Bink Bank Tour. Yeah, now uh, I reckon you can start off with coming up with a caption, yeah. hey, Ollie. Yeah, okay. Go on then. Right. You know, you're gonna you're gonna like this one. He's never gonna drink all that. I see what you've done there, Ollie. We can do better, so we're gonna ask the crowd if they can beat Ollie with their caption. Has every has anyone got uh, a caption? If so, put your hand up. Right, I'm gonna start off with Neil. This much beer will give you brain damage. <laughs> Neil, I like what you've done there. You're working in the last caption. Yeah. I, like, I like what you've done yeah. there. <laughs> Team Ineos. <laughs> anyway. Gary. My kids are killing me after that race. <laughs> my kids, I don't understand. My, no, don't my, get kegs. It. my oh, kegs. My kegs. Yeah. Oh, it's because Scottish, isn't it? Yeah. That's like Scottish oh. for trousers. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, Good, Gary. Keep working yeah. on it. Yeah. Is, it, is, it, is anyone else got good, one? Good try. Yeah. Yeah, you show the back. I'm going to get beard at the Big Bank. I'm going to get beard at the Big Bank. Is that what you said, sir? The Big Bank. Well, these are all excellent suggestions, but I'm sure that you guys can are do much better at home. So let us know your uh, suggestions in the comment section down below. It's time for Zwift Question of the Week. If you'd like to get in with a chance of earning three months of free subscription from our mates over at Zwift, then pop your question in the comment section below. What hashtag do you use, Ollie? Uh, Ask GCN Training. That's it. Yeah, and you're in with a chance of winning that three months subscription. So this week's question comes from Jamie Williams, who says, Hi. I've got my first 100 mile sportive coming up in 10 weeks and he's currently putting together a training plan with three uh, longer rides outdoors and two turbo sessions. Now he's just wondering what will be the best turbo sessions to do in order to get him ready for the event. So well, firstly, it's always quite daunting is it, your first 100 mile sportive? Yeah, but I mean great to hear that you're taking on your first 100 and you've given yourself a good amount of time to train with that 10 weeks. And your plan for three outdoor rides and two indoor ones is, is a really strong one as well. And we'd suggest that for your two indoor sessions, you focus on more structure and some higher intensity intervals in those sessions, and then use your outdoor rides to build endurance and, um, well, just have more volume in those sessions as well. Yeah, and for those indoor sessions during the week, we'd look to do, well, some intensity. So we're looking at some VO2 max sessions, and those you're looking at three to eight minutes long. Uh, so we'll start you off with four times three minute efforts. Now, you wanna have around a three minute recovery in between, so keep the effort time at the same amount as the recovery time. They're, yeah. all, they're quite hard, those. Yeah, VO2 max intervals are, yeah. are pretty hard, but they get you fit quick. Um, and for the other indoor session, it would be good to focus on your anaerobic capacity. So these are intervals that are typically one to three minutes long, and they differ from the VO2 max ones in that you'd, well, you'd have a longer rest period between those intervals. Yeah, and for those, we would look to do around four times one minute efforts with two minutes recovery in between, and that really works that anaerobic capacity. Yes, uh, and then when you're doing your remaining road rides, just focus on getting the endurance in and doing longer miles, increasing your volume and having fun, and good luck in your event. Yeah, really good luck, and hope that that really helps you. It's nearly time for the end of the show, but we're going to run through what's coming up on the channel this week. So on Wednesday, we've got Cycling Through Pregnancy. Sounds really interesting. Yeah, what, you something you want to tell me, Ollie? 
On Thursday, we've got uh, the future of indoor cycling with the Saris Factory Tour. And on Friday, we've got mountain bike versus gravel bike versus road bike. We love a versus. We do. Yeah, Sai has a mooch round the moots factory tour on Saturday. Sunday, garbage bike to gravel bike. John, uh, well, he found this one quite difficult, didn't he? On Monday, it's the race news show. And on Tuesday, it's back at the GCN show. It's now time for Extreme Corner. We're taking a bit of a different twist on this week, aren't we? Yeah, but this is very extreme. Two cyclists from America, Clay James and Cody Hughes, have, well, cycled up the highest mountain in North America. Mount Denali in Alaska stands, well, over 20,000 feet. It's staggering 6,193 meters. Impressive alone just to climb that. But to put it into context, the gargantuan Gross Glockner, which is over there somewhere, we're climbing that tomorrow. That is only 2,500 meters. And that's a savage climb. Yeah, these guys are absolutely mental because they climbed it. But before that, they cycled 3,560 miles to get there with all their kit in it as well. And when they were planning this, they were like, well, let's kind of not give off a massive carbon footprint because they worked out that to fly there would cost them 1,600 gallons of fuel, or cost the um, airline. And, uh, and yeah, so they decided to cycle there and then climb up and then cycle back. How incredible was that? Yeah, it's mad. So it's check really out this mad. video. That's definitely extreme. Oh, look at what extreme that, isn't it? Are you going to do it? Next, no. next ski trip, are you going to ride there instead of fly there? No. No. Anyway. It's now time, unfortunately, for the end of the show. So, a massive thanks to our live audience yes. to here GCN in Salbach. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe to GCN. Click the little bell icon and head over to GCN Racing because we've got live welter highlights every day. I love this crowd. Shall we have them all week? Yeah.